p-values and significance levels help us decide whether or not we should reject our null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. They help us measure the compatibility between the data and the null hypothesis. Recall that we are using the following null and alternative hypothesis. We had calculated our test statistic to be negative 2.6, and this allows us to say that the sample average IQ of 117 is 2.6 standard errors below what we'd expect it to be, an average of 130, if the null really is true. To measure the compatibility between our estimate and the null value, we will calculate the probability of observing a sample average of 117 or less by chance, assuming Kian's IQ really is 130. This is what we call a p-value. We've also seen that we can look at this in terms of what we're calling a test statistic. Assuming the null is true, the probability of observing a sample average of 117 or less by chance is the same as observing a sample average that is 2.6 standard errors below the mean or more by chance. Suppressing the calculations for the moment and using the normal distribution as an approximation for simplicity, we would find that the p-value is approximately 0.47%. It is very important that we talk about what the p-value's interpretation is and what it is not. The p-value is not interpreted as there being a 0.47% chance that Kian's IQ is 130. It is not interpreted as there is a 0.47% chance that his IQ is 130 given our sample either. It is interpreted as follows. Assuming that Kian's IQ really is 130, there is only a 0.47% chance of observing a sample average IQ of 117 or less by chance. From here, we know one of two things must have happened. Either the null is true, and he just ended up with one of those rare 47 out of 10,000 times kind of days, or the null is false, and his IQ really is something less than 130. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel like us on Facebook, and visit our website.